Spina bifida. Anatomy. Spina bifida results from a developmental anomaly wherein the vertebral bodies, which originate from the mesoderm encircling the notochord, fail to close correctly. From each body center, two projections stretch out, growing around the neural canal to establish the vertebral arch. These two halves of the arch typically fuse together in the thoracic region, and from this point, the fusion process extends both upwards and downwards, encapsulating the entire vertebral column. This fusion is essential for the correct formation and protection of the spinal cord. However, in cases where the arches fail to fuse properly, a condition known as spina bifida occurs. This failure of fusion can leave a gap, varying in severity, along the vertebral column. This condition is frequently associated with maldevelopment of the spinal cord and its protective membranes, potentially leading to various neurological complications. Types of Spina Bifida Spina Bifida presents a range of severity, extending from a minor failure of fusion of the spinous processes to a substantial bony defect, accompanied by serious anomalies in the neural development. There are two principal types of Spina Bifida, Spina Bifida Occulta and Spina Bifida Aperta. Spina bifida occulta. This represents the mildest and the most common form of the disorder. Here, the vertebral arches fusion failure leads to bifid spinous processes of the vertebrae. The most common closed neural tube defect. Its key features include predominant site. It usually occurs in the lumbosacral spine, with S1 being the most common site. External manifestation. Skin overlying the defect can be normal or present signs like a dimple, lipomatous mass, dermal sinus, or a tuft of hair, vertebral bone defect without herniation. Neurological impairment is not directly proportional to the severity of the bone defect. The most common manifestation is a muscle imbalance in the lower limbs, leading to selective muscle atrophy, resulting in foot deformities such as equinovirus or cavus. Treatment When a patient is symptomless and the lesion is only discovered on an x-ray taken for a different problem, no treatment is generally needed. If the patient presents with backache, physiotherapy can often help manage the discomfort. For cases presenting with a neurological defect, it's crucial to evaluate the cause and the likelihood of the neurological deficit worsening over time. MRI likely is the imaging modality of choice for detailed assessment of the spinal cord and surrounding structures. Surgical treatment might be necessary in some cases, particularly if there are symptoms such as pain or neurological deficits, or if the defect is causing other complications. Orthopedic treatment for spina bifida occulta often follows similar principles as for a paralytic limb, which are prevention and correction of deformities. This might involve physical therapy, bracing, or in more severe cases, orthopedic surgery. Utilizing residual muscle power for more useful functions. Techniques such as tendon transfers and joint stabilization can help maximize the use of any remaining motor function. Providing support for walking. This can involve the use of aids such as braces, crutches, or wheelchairs depending on the individual's needs. The main goal is to optimize a patient's mobility and independence as much as possible. Spina bifida aperta. This is a more severe form, involving defects in the vertebral arches, overlying soft tissues, skin, and often the meninges. In extreme cases, the neural tube itself may be exposed. Predominant site. The dorsolumbar spine is commonly affected. Types. Depending on the extent of the neural tube closure defect, it can further be classified as meningocele, protrusion of meninges through a neural arch defect containing only cerebral spinal fluid. Meningomyelocele. The protrusion includes meninges as well as some neural elements. Syringomyelocele. The central canal of the cord is dilated, syringomyelia, and the cord, along with the arising nerves, is found within the protruded meningeal sac. Myelocele. 
This results from a halt in development at the time of neural groove closure. An elliptical raw surface representing the ununited groove is seen. Apart from spina bifida occulta, myelocele is the most common type of spina bifida, although many such cases result in stillbirths. If the child is born alive, death usually occurs within a few days from infection of the cord and meninges. Despite neural developmental defects, patients often survive. In these cases, there can be varying degrees of lower limb paralysis. These children are frequently born with deformities, most notably flexion adduction contracture of the hip and foot deformities. Such deformities are the direct consequence of muscle imbalance resulting from paralysis. There might also be incontinence of urine and bowel. Treatment. The management of this condition encompasses addressing the primary defect, that is spina bifida. This usually involves surgical intervention where the defect is repaired and closed to prevent further damage and infection. Orthopedic treatment. This focuses on the prevention and correction of deformities. The primary goal is to maximize the utilization of residual motor function. It may involve physical therapy, bracing, or in some cases, orthopedic surgery to correct significant deformities. Urological treatment. Incontinence, a common issue in these patients, needs to be managed appropriately. This might involve a combination of behavioral interventions, medications, and potentially surgical procedures to optimize bladder function. Proper care can significantly improve the quality of life of these patients. Image-based discussion. Image A. Lumbosacral spina bifida at 22 plus two weeks of gestation. Longitudinal view showing the large lumbosacral defect. Image B. Transverse view showing the U-shaped vertebral body with the neural tissue protruding through. In this image, the frontal bossing, typically termed the lemon sign, is seen, which is present in cases of open spina bifida, but can also be seen in normal fetuses. Here's an image showing sacral dimple. Sacral dimples occur in approximately 5% of neonates and are the most common cutaneous sign of spinal dysraphism incomplete closure of the neural tube during early embryogenesis, leading to spinal or bony abnormalities. Simple dimples are defined as midline depressions in the dermis that are less than 5 mm in diameter and within 2.5 cm of the anus. Larger lesions, atypical dimples, and those above the gluteal cleft have been associated with spinal dysraphism. Males and females are equally affected. There are no differences reported among ethnic groups. That's all for the video. We'll see you next time.